Hey everyone, it's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. I'm here for a cricket date night for um, the first time in a long time. And I'm hoping to get some folks to join me tonight. Um, we're going to be putting together a couple of projects um, from a brand new set. Hold on, I'm just typing in my password here. From a brand new set. Hello, Paula. Hi, Daniela. Nice to see you all. I'm um, going to give a few minutes and just kind of give you an update on what we're doing here. And then we'll jump right in. So tonight's date night, which is a little bit longer. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Hi, Daniela. How are you tonight, sweetie? Cynthia or Carolina, or Cynthia and Carolina. Hi, Susan and Christine. Hi, everyone. Peggy, hi, happy date night. Um, so glad you could join me. I'm actually alone tonight. My son went to stay with his father, so um, I'm alone tonight, and I was like, this is a perfect night for date night. Hi, Shelly. Um, and so I wanted to show you a couple of projects. These come from Dreaming Tree and um, they're, they're brand new and he's having a sale. I just tried to pull up their website, but for some reason I'm having trouble logging in. But we're gonna be making, um, howdy from Texas, Shelly. Um, and Lisa, hello, welcome. Pat, this Pat, how are you doing? Yeah, we're all doing good. And there's Constance. Hi, everyone. So, so I'm just gonna, as you introduce yourselves, I'm gonna um, just go ahead and and show you what we're gonna be making. So, this is part of a um, of a set that just came out from Dreaming Tree, which can be found at 3D SVG. And I will drop a link in the description of the video. I did uh, have put a link in there earlier today as well. They're having a sale, 25% off sale, and this is a bundle that includes uh, the Star Bowl that we did earlier in the week. So if you haven't seen that, you might wanna hit the replay on that one. Um, I can't reach it, it's in the back here, but it's really pretty like star-shaped bowl that you could do patriotic or you could change it up. So we did that. We did the little free cracker for, um, you know, for a, for a table like kind of like it, it opens up and has little things inside and then also they have this uh blueberry and cherry pie which are just boxes i don't know if you'd actually want to put pie in there but you could put little treats or something in there as like a little you know after the party or something it's really big i was really surprised at how big it is and it has a really cute um uh, what do you call that whipped cream on the top and I love the lattice I'm going to show you how to put that together if we have time and I think we'll have time because the main event is this I'm going to pull up my thing so you can see the whole thing because it's big it's super super big this one here I didn't do it patriotically I started doing it um, up here in New England we have a lot of these in the middle of our commons all the different cities in our commons and at Christmas time they usually put bows on them uh, bunting and um, this is a it's a luminary or lum yeah luminary and this particular one comes with uh, three holes for the candles unfortunately because all of our craft stores are still closed until next week I couldn't run out to get some of the uh, candles but he gives you either a flat surface, one for three sizes, or one for one big one. And so I put this one together just before coming on and I started doing it as a Christmas thing. I haven't put all the bows and the bunting on there, but I am so, so, so surprised at how big it is. I mean, there it is, really, really big. I don't know, I'd say like, I don't know, 14 inches tall and eight, eight inches wide it's big but it goes together really easily so it's not going to be a terrible challenge for us so um i'm gonna move you down so i can see everybody hello thanks for sharing thank you for sharing also tonight after we put together 
the gazebo, but before we do the pie slice, we're gonna have some giveaways. And um, so that's fun. We're doing a giveaway this month. Um, that is, well, we do giveaways every month here on Miss Rita to the Rescue. And this one is for iron-on. We've been doing a lot of iron-on. Um, I, uh, let's see, we've been doing a lot of iron-on here and we're doing a lot of infusible ink. So um, I saw, you know, some people are a little afraid to do the iron-on and especially the infusible ink. And so I thought, you know, now's a good time People are making t-shirts. Oh, stop woofing, stop woofing. Um, and uh, my little teddy bear is woofing over here. So, um, so I thought that we would do a three rolls that are samplers for iron-on. So this month we're giving away three sampler rolls um, and they're beautiful, they're beautiful. And uh, so you get on each roll three different colors so you're going to end up with nine yep prizes are good prizes are awesome so you got to stick with me until almost the end because that's my marketing idea <laughs> to keep people from staying to to watch to keep people to get people to stay to watch so um we're going to do that before we do the pie but after we do the gazebo so we're gonna put this together as like the patriotic style, not the Christmassy style like I did earlier, but I wanted to put one together so you could see what it looked like finished and also to um, to see how big it is, oh my gosh. Also, while I have you all here, Cricut, you know, we do this Cricut um, date night, try to do it Saturday nights. Haven't done it in a while because I, have been feeling pretty awful but um but i feel really good today so we're doing this on saturday night seven o'clock we also post it on youtube after it's done and um and that's uh it's on the replay and then i repost it on to my groups so i wanted to just make you aware of the fact that if you're watching this um after the fact thank you for watching it after the fact i really appreciate that um and if you want to see us live or see me live uh, during the week or again on date night I am here on Facebook live at Miss Rita to the rescue um, every day during the week I think it's the only daily live cricket show um, on Facebook that I know of I haven't heard anybody else doing it so um, so it's the uh, Monday through Friday at nine o'clock and we do a mix. I'm primarily a paper crafter, but we do do a mix. Um, thank you, Susan. Yeah, so we do do a mix of paper. We do iron on, a little bit of vinyl. I'm not a huge, huge vinyl fan. Um, and then we do um, a lot of paper, a lot of cards. I love to make cards. I love to make 3D things. So which is why we did this. We do that Monday through Friday, nine o'clock. Um, and then we post those for replay on YouTube and on Facebook. And then this is Saturday night, date night. So if you're just joining us now for the first time, welcome. And we're gonna get right down to it. Um, let's just give you a minute. I wanna just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Rita Cavicchio. And I started uh, Miss Rita to the Rescue uh, several years ago. I was chosen as a uh, Facebook, I'm um, not a Facebook, a Cricut product expert um, back in 2014. And that program has grown. It's a, it's a small program, but there's a handful of people who um, are like brand ambassadors for Cricut. We're not employees, but we just um, show you some of the new stuff and and uh, it's really a fun, fun little job, and and uh, I really enjoy it a lot. Um, I've been crafting with a Cricut since 2012. Yeah, the year after my dad passed, um, my uncle asked me to uh, help with like a family reunion, and so that's how I got introduced to the Cricut. And over the years, have changed from the 
um, older machines, the Expression, um, Expression 2, to the Explore, and then I have had every machine since then, including the Joy. Um, the, these projects tonight are not Joy compatible. They're just too big. You could try to resize them, but to be honest, I think these kind of ones need, need to be um, bigger. So even if you have a joy though, it's fun to watch how this goes together and maybe you'll win a prize too. Who knows? So let's see. So this, this particular project consists of this top part. It has vellum on the inside. It has a nice little cupola and actually a hole for a finial, which, um, I couldn't find again. I'm, you know, we're still sort of on lockdown. So, um, Hey, Teresa. Oh, no way. The first date night. Welcome for the first date night. Um, and appreciate that. <laughs> um, so anyway, so the top has like a little hole for like a cupola. And I thought once I can get back to the store for the Christmas one, I might do something like a star on there. But it's a really neat. It has like a, a top to it. So you can put inside these three candles and don't ever use live candles use those led because you it's all paper you know um and then there's the the actual gazebo around and there's the base and and it just goes like this and there are a lot of little decorations so we're gonna um start with the bottom and work our way up and then we'll do some decorations so let's start with the bottom so the bottom consists of this is the bottom piece again you can cut it out in the extras file there's one that's just flat say if you didn't want to put uh, candles in there you want to put something else like a bowl or flowers or something you could do that um, and then they have one that's just one big round one too thank you so much for sharing ladies I appreciate it really do try to get the word out so um, so to start off we're going to fold and I got glue on this so I apologize but this is just the piece we're gonna fold it all the fold lines now I've cut this out to save us time because and also I know you guys um, know how to cut things out but just as a word of caution when you are importing a file from Dreaming Tree you do have to make sure that you import all of the different SVGs and in this case I'm trying to remember but I think it was probably about 14 different um, SVGs uh, let me see wait a second so here here is what you get this is the the um, the instructions and it tells you on the instruction sheet so it's good to to print them off ahead of time hi Laverne oh nice Laverne's new yeah it does take a long time to import it and it also you, you know takes a long time to cut it out um, and so I've cut it out twice now I'll probably cut it out a couple more times and send these to my uh, family a couple of my family members but um, it's really big so here's when you get the instructions you get all of the different um, these are all the SVGs you're going to import individually so there's two four six eight 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 22 if you're cu if you're cutting out the separate bottoms. But sorry about about 20, right? And it will tell you on this description thing how many sheets you're going to need of cardstock. Now, um, you do not have to make this uh, patriotic if you're if you're you know if you live in Canada and you like Teresa and you want to do something Canadian you can certainly do that um, or if you're doing this I thought this would be beautiful for a wedding like a centerpiece for a wedding um, and maybe put little uh, figures in there or something I don't know um, I was thinking on the way today thinking yeah a, a wedding would be nice to put um, you could decorate it in the bride's colors and everything so Let's start with the base. So the base is just this piece. This, um, is it a one, two, three? It's a hexagon. And I folded it all in the little fold areas. And what I'm going to be doing is putting this glue right here on this little tab all the way around to give the, um, to give the base that 3D effect. I like to work from a flat surface, but I'm going to see if 
I'm gonna stay in frame. Yeah, I, this week I kind of got out of frame on one of my videos and um, I think it's a little hard being a one-man operation, you know? <sighs> yeah, I keep mine in a notebook, Shelly. Actually, I have a lot of notebooks. I think I have about 10 notebooks for all the SVGs. And the great thing about, um, about Dreaming Tree is they do give you that description. Um, but, and so does Mary from SVG Cuts. She gives you great, great, um, instructions as well. So I tend to put them in categories. So I have like spring, summer, winter, fall. And then I also have a separate one just for cards and a separate one for 3D structures. Um, and let's see what else I got. Halloween and Christmas. So I don't know I'm not counting in my head how many of that is but I keep them in three ring binders and then when the when the new season approaches I take those binders and I look through because you forget you know you have literally dozens and dozens of files to go through and sometimes when I buy them I don't have the opportunity to make them right away because usually when you buy them like on dreaming tree um, they, uh, it's like buy two and then you get the new one for free. So I usually will buy things ahead of time for the upcoming season. So, okay. So I, I just glued all of these edges here and now I'm going to take, this is the, uh, the bottom of here. So I'm going to start with one of the, because we want this to, to be nice and flat so that you know our candles stay nice and flat so we're going to start with one of the tap i'm going to move you a little bit okay i hope we don't lose the light i did get a light uh this time but i figured it's it's the middle of june i think we're going to have some nice light tonight so um okay so once you get it on that one tab work on a flat surface because this is very easy to warp and then you just put the glue. And remember, not a lot of glue. Let's talk about glue, because we do every single time we do a paper project. This is the glue that I use. You don't have to use it. There's plenty of really good glues on the market, including there's a Scotch brand and even an Elmer's for paper. Um, my trick with glue is just to go sparingly and add it instead of starting off with too much. Um, because it can cause problems like warping and then you get it all over your fingers. So here, look, I, I need to add a tiny bit more. I can do that. Okay. And if you want, you can kind of stretch your fingers inside there to just make sure you're getting good contact with that for the bottom. Okay, so there's our base. And um, the base also has around the edges, so it can hide my glue. It has um, around the edges cutouts. Let me see if I can find them here. Now this is a cutout that you could certainly um, emboss if you wanted to, like a wood grain if you wanted to. Uh, I didn't do any embossing or any inking uh, on this project, but you can certainly do that on it a um, little bit rushed this week i'm so excited for this coming week uh, because we are going to be doing all those brand new infusible ink blanks i keep hitting the camera i apologize okay so here are the pieces that go on to um the side here to cover my little glue marks and yeah so this week coming up we're going to do some more makeup cases, but the infusible ink makeup cases, we're gonna do that wine bag. I found so many cool SVGs and um, actually images in design space to do that with. And I wanted to show you that. And then we have the pillowcases, which I plan on doing both sides. Like, um, I think I picked out like a fall and a Thanksgiving. And then I thought I would do like a Christmas and a winter to do on either side of those, um, of those 
pillows. Then we also have, uh, it's Pride Month, so I put together some great Pride t-shirts using infusible ink and some of the new infusible ink. So I was doing that. Oh, and then somebody really turned me on to faux leather this week um, with iron-on on it. I wish I could remember her name. It's, I'm drawing a blank right now. And so I'm going to show you how to cut earrings um, and iron on the earrings and then uh, cut them on the joy. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I, I, I'm pretty sure there is, and I started putting slots in for the week, and so I feel like I'm really starting to get in the groove here, and now that I'm feeling better, um, I can plan ahead and tell you guys what we're, we're doing. I think next week's date night, if if the Lord willing, we can do it. I think we're gonna be doing um, a bunch of box cards from Mary at SVG Cuts called the Boardwalk Box Cards. And they're so adorable. There's a sand castle, there's um, a flip flop, and they're all box cards. And uh, flip flop, sand castle, um, a little tape cassette, and there's five of them, so we're gonna do that uh, next date night, I think. I think that would be fun. So here is our base, all done. And you can put this aside because you don't need to, to worry about that just yet. Next, we'll start working on the main piece. Oops, somebody's itchy. So the main piece, it's just these two pieces right here. Somebody has got the itchies today. I think that's my Benjamin. You can hear him rattle his tags. So the main piece is obviously there's six sides to this. So you have to fold everything in at all of the score lines. And so there are score lines going here and score lines above and below. And then we have the side ones. The score lines are actually dashed cut lines. And when you are importing and before you cut, you have to attach those lines um, to your SVG, okay? And actually, I think I've, Folded, yeah, I did fold this in correctly because we have to then take these two pieces now that it's all folded and we're going to match up here. Ah, move over, move over. Okay, so we're going to match up here at these two tabs. Boy, I'm a mess today. I'm not very organized today. So we're going to match up here at these two tabs here to make a large strip and I have it can you see what I'm doing wrong doing it wrong Rita you guys are supposed to catch me on that okay here we go yep sorry so you you're going to make sure that they're lined up so that this part here which is supposed to be the fence is on the bottom for both pieces um, the earrings are gonna I'm gonna do them on the joy Teresa, I'm gonna do them on the joy. You have a joy, right? Um, so I'm gonna do it on the joy because they're small enough to do. And the joy does cut faux leather. I haven't tried cutting them out, but I did get a confirmation that it does cut faux leather. I don't think it would cut um, real leather. It's too thick, but I did find two rolls, uh, a blue and a like a goldish color. Well, maybe it's a light brown of faux leather um, in my stash. I'm kind of stuck here because, well, we're all stuck at home, so, um, but some more than others. And here in Massachusetts, they're very, being very, very strict about when they, they have all these phases when they're opening up. So until the stores are open, which won't be for I think another couple weeks, I'm kind of stuck with either ordering online or going into my craft stash. So, um, so I was only able to get two, two of the uh, rolls of faux leather, and then I have a whole bunch of iron on. I thought we could do like some gold and foil and things like that. I think that would look really cool. So. Okay, so we put together, this is our base. 
we can leave it as one long strip to start off with and then we're going to take our pieces and do note here this one here does not this is where the entrance is okay so we need to find the one that doesn't have that part and we're going to put it on here and then the rest of them will go on these other ones this is really a simple project it's just big so if you're used to working small, working bigger um, can sometimes be a little challenging. I might have to put that, I might have to put that lamp on. I'm starting to feel like I'm losing the light. You guys will tell me. So um, it doesn't go directly on, so you can see a little bit of the red. And again, you can cut these out whatever color you want. Um, you don't have to stick with their colors. That's the great thing about doing your own is that you can choose whatever color. And again, like I said, if you're gonna do this for a wedding and they liked, I don't know, pink and, I don't know, pink and purple or something like that or whatever, you could do it for that or all white like I did here. You can add glitter pieces. Um, it's, it's all up to you. That's the great thing about cricketing, is that you have that choice. And I know sometimes that's the hard part, is picking the right colors, and I think that designers know that, and that's why they give you you know, suggestions, but they encourage you to use um, your imagination, and that's the great thing uh, about and use what you have, you know, you don't have to go running out to the store and buying a whole bunch of stuff um, when you have might have a stash at home. That's what's been great about about being in lockdown. It's been using a lot of my stash and uh, which is good. It makes it a lot easier for me to find things. I have so much paper. Uh, you know, people make uh, someone, Teresa, is it Teresa or Wanda? Wanda is asking about faux leather. Do I have curbside? Um, we have it in some places, but it was pretty rare. It still is pretty rare. You can pick up and like big stores, I think I stayed away from. Um, and because I was also, because I was, uh, or I am considered immunosuppressed because of the chemo. I um, I had to rely on my family. I have a great sister that helped me, and she went shopping for me for groceries. But you couldn't get anywhere near the delivery, um, the grocery delivery. Uh, I don't know about you, but I like to. I like it was a real that was a real tough thing to do because I like to pick up my own produce. You know, I don't know. I feel like I pick up the best produce. Don't you? <laughs> you know, um, and so that was hard. But my sister is exacting like I am. So um, so I know she got me the best produce. Ah, okay. So here what I'm doing is just taking those cover pieces and gluing them on all of the front of the gazebo. I have a funny little joke, a funny little thing. I have a girlfriend who lives in New Hampshire. And um, when I was growing up, we called these gazebos. I don't know if you guys ever heard that. It's sort of like people who call buffets, buffets. Um, I think because they might be from French, I don't know. So when um, she moved into her house and put up a gazebo, I went up there and I kept saying, Oh, that's a beautiful gazebo. And she was, she was laughing at me. Um, why would you pronounce it that way? And I said, oh, that's the official way to pronounce it. So um, I always joke with her when I visit up there and call it a gazebo. Does anybody else call it that? Um, oh, yeah, they did. Michaels and Joanne. But our Joannes aren't, aren't really that great up here. I don't know. They aren't that great. Okay, so I put on, so here's the back, there's the front. And so now I can close it up. And this we wanna do on the on a flat surface too because um, we wanna make sure that it's completely even. We're gonna put glue right here on this tab. 
and we're going to fold it in and make sure it folds this way. Now you can actually open it up and double check your work. Like I don't think it was very, hmm. Here we go. This doesn't look, oh, I think maybe it might be the way I put on the white. There we go. Give it a second to catch and go back and see, did I miss anything? And I did not. Okay, so here is the gazebo base, or not the base, but the actual main piece. And we're going to first, we're gonna flip it over and do the bottom part first. And this is where this piece comes in. So here, this is our base, remember? So we put this on there and then we're gonna match it. Now, one thing that I noticed, and it's very faint, there's an F that says, I wanna show it to you, it's a very small F. And so we're going to line it up with the F on this one, also pretty faint, okay? And we're going to line it up this way with this being the one without the um, without the railing being on, on that way, um, having the F facing that way, okay? And the easiest way I found, you know, when, when Leah was putting this together, he did it a little differently than I would have. So I'm just gonna do it my way and you can, um, you can always watch his video but the way that I do it is I am putting glue onto the bottom inside piece of this hex, the hexagon, just a little. And then I'm going to work with the bottom like down, right? And I'm going to take this piece and turn it inside like this and sort of nestle it down, allowing, whoops, hit the camera with my head, sorry, allowing it to, um, to shape the bottom. Yeah, well, it is easy. It's super easy. And we're going to allow it to shape the bottom. And don't worry if it doesn't all completely stick, we're gonna flip it over and make sure that it's sticking, okay? See, there is, it is turning it over, making sure it's sticking. We can put a little bit more glue on the tabs. Um, and this is gonna make those candles that you use stay in there better. So uh, if somebody comes along and bumps it, does, they don't go whizzing outside of the, of the gazebo, gazebo, okay? Make sure, you can always add more glue, but it's hard to take it away, okay? All right, so then we have our shape. Isn't that great? So easy, this comes together so quickly. I was really very pleased. So we're gonna turn in our top, top tabs now. Right, and we're going to take, we have we have a couple of pieces here, but this is the one we want. It's just kind of a, a lip that's going to go right there and also stabilize the top of the gazebo. Okay, so you can either put the glue on the tabs or you can put it on the, on the actual piece. Personally, I just do it on the tabs, but it's a personal preference, I guess. Okay. I cannot believe that, uh, first of all, what tomorrow is Father's Day, and then boom, it's uh, 4th of July. It just sneaks, all these holidays, they just sneak up on me. Um, 
and I think we did a couple of patriotic projects. I don't think I'm going to be able to squeeze any more in before the 4th of July, but I'm going to see. I've got a couple of other really good ones that I want to show you. A box card that's 4th of July from Lori Whitlock. Uh, I'll see if I can try to squeeze that one in. It's really cute. Easy, easy, easy. Don't stress yourself out, you know? This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a lot of fun. So if it stresses you out, you know you need to quit, take a break, come back to it. Um, it's supposed to be relaxing. So there is our beast, right? Now we can dress it up. There's bunting um, and there is uh, there are uh, bows. I'm gonna show you how to put one of the bows together and how to affix the, um, the I'm gonna look for that F, there's our F. Um, but we're going to affix this middle part to here. Birthday cards, sure, we can do birthday cards. Um, uh, I, I'd be interested in hearing, you know, do you guys want to do more joy stuff, more explore maker stuff? Um, I thought layered vinyl would be a good, a good one to do. Like maybe a sign, a layered vinyl sign. But um, I'm not super into the vinyl. I know a lot of people are, but I'm happy to show you. Oh yeah, we want to show you text boxes and how to turn. We're going to do that kindness matters. Um, I'll show you how I made that. Oh, I have so many notes. I have so many notes um, of things that we have to do. We're going to be busy all summer long. Um, okay, so here's what I did. I put the base onto the main piece using glue with the using those tabs and you can dress this up with I found this cute little bunting that you can it's it's got these um the little dashed lines here you sort of fold it like this and I'm not going to show you to put all of them on because that would be kind of time consuming but let's just show you this and I want to show you how to do some of the bows that you also get there. So, I believe it goes on this way, like this. I think that's where it should go. And I found some nice red and white bunting, but you might have something like stars with it or whatever, okay? And then you would put it all around there. And let me show you how the bows go together pretty simple it's three pieces or, or they are three pieces that consists of the tails and this is the actual bow that you can fold at these little score marks okay and then you have the little ribbon where is it that goes around the middle of the bow here we go. So the first thing you want to do, and you can do this with your hand, or you can do it with a, like a bone folder or something, but you're going to give the bow a little bit of a uh, curve to it. I do it with my fingers. Then we're going to fold it in. We're going to glue here and fold that in. And then we're going to glue there and fold it in. Let me see if I can't get you a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So first thing, we're gonna put a little bit of glue in the middle and we take one of the bow parts and fold it in. You could use like a, a pick or something like that if your fingers get in the way and then do the other side. So here's our bow. Then we take this little piece right here and it folds in three. This might be too de detailed. You could buy the bows made if you want to, but oh, okay, teddy bear. 
I think it's walking time for people's pets and they have a full view of outside. So they get to, um, they get to bark at all the pets going by on a Saturday night for their date nights <laughs> with their owners. So then we put this little part in the middle. Again, I probably would use like a little pick just so I can make sure I get that in there and make it look good. And then we take the tails. There's the tails. And put a little tiny bit of glue. Boop. And put this here. Again, I wish I, I don't know where I have my, I can use these. Sort of make sure that it's attaching while I'm doing that. I can kind of fluff up the bow a little bit. You see? Let me get closer. So that's the bow. And again, if that's just too much for you, that's okay. You don't have to do the bows, but then you can put them all here. And there's a whole bunch of them you can cut out, and you can cut them out in any color you want. It also gives you little um, gold stars which if you wanted to use the gold stars instead, you could do that. But, um, so it would just give you these options that you can do, do all of that stuff. Okay, so let's start on the top. So we've got our base, we've got our, our thing here. Lay Wanda's saying layered iron-on or vinyl, okay. I have a few tricks up my sleeve to show you how I do layered vinyl and iron on. It's a little unconventional. I'm happy to show you, show you it. Okay, so the top. So the top consists of these three pieces and they have all of these score lines, but they're pretty much the same. I'm trying to think, I think the stars vary a little bit on where their locations are, but we're gonna fold it but all of the score lines, and there are there's an extra one here. You got to fold that, okay? And then there are these sides. You got to fold all of those. I do all my scoring ahead of time. Just kind of helps me to visualize the project, okay? So there's three pieces just like this. So again, fold them all at all the score lines. Should have plugged in that lamp. Hmm. I thought we'd keep the light. Okay, so folding the third one, all the score lines, and we're going to decorate it before we put it together. And the way that we're decorating it is we're using vellum. Now, um, when they did this, they said to use blue vellum. I can never find the colored vellum. All I'm able to find is gold and um, translucent vellum. Now, there is a trick to print color on your vellum that, that the folks at Dreaming Tree uh, taught me. I've shown you that before. If that's something you wanna see again, I can show you, but I'm not near my printer. Um, it's pretty easy. It's like a little PDF that's free that you download and you basically put the um, put the uh, vellum inside your printer and you print the blue ink or whatever color ink you want, yellow, green, whatever, onto that and then you cut it out. It's pretty simple um, and I've shown you that actually I think twice before. So okay, we're doing the back side of this and we're gonna put the vellum on. If you've never worked with vellum before, you have to know that this is, it can be a little tricky when you're first starting. It does not require a lot of glue and if you do use a lot of glue, it will warp. So definitely very sparingly and on the inside edge here, whoops, we're going to put our vellum pieces to cover all of the, it's just gonna give a nice soft light to the when, the, when the light from the candles come out. 
And again, you don't need to use vellum. If you can't find it, that's okay. You can leave it open. I love the look of vellum. Um, I love to work with vellum. But it's, it's hard to find, especially all the colors. And he uses like every color under the sun vellum. I don't know where. He says he gets it on Amazon, but I have never been able to do that. So, um, so for me, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to buy. I bought this vellum in like eight and a half by 11 inch sheets. And it was a 50 pack um, on Amazon. But you can also buy like, I think it's five or 10 sheets at Michael's. But it's a little bit expensive, I think, for the five sheets or the ten sheets or something you get. It's like six bucks. And for the 50 pack, I can probably go and find out where I got that and um, put a link on the page so you can see. I use a lot of vellum, especially at Christmas. Um, I like a lot of these, like, uh, lantern-y things. Yeah, you could use tissue paper too. The important part is just don't use live candles because you know you don't want it to, and you don't want to leave it unattended even if you are using um, the candles. Sometimes people use um, like electric, and tissue paper will work. Yeah, sure it would. Tissue paper is a little bit different work to work with, as you probably know. Um, crepe paper, maybe. In a pinch, you could probably use parchment paper. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Or freezer paper, if you have some freezer paper or something. But not butcher paper. It has to be kind of translucent. And when you're looking for vellum, don't do what I did. Was like I just typed in vellum, and um, I ended up getting this texture paper. But it wasn't translucent, and so it, I ended up with like a, I don't know. It was like, it was such a good deal. I just dropped my left. Okay. It was such a good deal. <laughs> and I couldn't understand why. Um, and it turned out it was just a regular paper. It wasn't translucent. I had to return it. So that was kind of a pain. But anyway, so here's the vellum on the back. We're going to flip it over. And we're going to take these pieces here and put them. What do we got? We got them all six pieces here. Okay, you guys. Um, and we're gonna match them. So as I mentioned, some of the stars are like slightly different here. There's this one here with the small one next to it. So you gotta make sure you match them up um, properly. So this one goes there and this one goes there uh, yep here here and some of these cutouts didn't come out but that's okay oh here we go okay so we're just gonna glue these pieces on and then we can put together the top. So simple, right? It really is not difficult. It's just large and a lot of pieces. So that can be overwhelming. Don't get overwhelmed. This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be, you know, something fun to do with your free time. Um, and you know, the first time you do something, it doesn't always come out perfect. That's okay. Um, imperfection's important, I think, with homemade stuff. I think it's really important. Somebody, we were talking about that earlier in the week, about how quilts, Amish quilts, they always um, work in an imperfection. So for the, to stay humble, I think that's a really great, um, it's a great idea. Because, you know, you want something perfect, then, yeah, you can go get it manufactured in, you know, a foreign country or something. Um, but doing it by hand, and, and these things will last you. Now, um, during, like, the off months, I do store all of my, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't throw, I have a really hard time throwing things that I've made away. 
Um, so I tend to store them in like those Rubbermaid containers and take them out each year. So I always make sure I put my name and um, the the date that I made it on the back. And what I really love, especially at Christmas time, is when I make the ornaments and stuff, um, I can come back and say, oh wow, look at how terrible I was <laughs> at making this stuff. I'm so much better now. Um, you know, it, you get to see your progress over the years. I just really love that. And my Christmas tree has all homemade ornaments on it. Um, so I have things from when I was Oh, so little and um, things that people made me that are homemade such as precious thing but yeah I have trouble I don't know about you guys but I just can't throw things away even a card I have trouble so <laughs> when I'm gone somebody's gonna have to do a extreme intervention or something okay so we've got our three pieces with the vellum on the inside and these white pieces on the outside so we can start to assemble this now one of the things i want to point out to you is that this goes let me show you from here so the way this goes is it comes it comes down this way and juts out and then down okay so the way that I found easiest to do is to start with this piece right here just to kind of give it shape like this right because see that's gonna fold this is gonna fold up so I'm gonna go through my three pieces first and do those little interior tabs right there first. Right? Because this is gonna come this way. You can train the paper a little bit if you want to while you're holding it. Right? And then after you do those three pieces, oops, I got the dropsies today. After you do those three pieces, now we can come and do the interior piece here, like that. Put some glue on that tab. How are we doing on time? Well, yeah, I'm running a little long, but it's date night, it's okay. We have no place to go. All right, so just make sure you're keeping that shape to, to it like that. And holding it, make sure you get it real close to where those dash cut lines are because you want it to be able to fit on the top of your of your base, okay? There's the second one, here's the third one. All right, so then we can go ahead and attach them together. So we're gonna attach them here again with the tabs like this. Let's do that. Make sure I line that up correctly because I want to keep that shape. There we go. You'll do better because you won't be rushing. So starting to see that shape there, which is real nice. Now you could use a glue gun, but honestly, I just don't like glue guns. I'm always burning myself. 
I'm a little accident prone. I cut my finger earlier today. And I was like, oh great, another scar on my hand to show the whole world. So, um, okay, so see how it's going together? And it's really got that funnel-y shape to it. We want that, we want that peaked part of the shape to go and then for it to come out like this. And then we put that last piece on to make the completed top. Take your time. I'm going fast, I know. But take your time, okay? So there is our piece, our top piece. We have to secure it, of course. But I'm just making sure that it's drying so that it's nice and flat. Okay, the next part is sort of an embellishment, but it's good because it gives it some, um, it gives it some sturdiness. Are these pieces that I cut in this brown? You could emboss this if you want with something that looked like shingles or something, um, or you can ink it, whatever you'd like to do. But there's uh, one piece for every one of the panels. Just gives it a little more sturdiness, which I like. So if you have this on the outside or party or something outside, you know, it's just not gonna go floating away with a good stiff breeze, you know? Actually, I usually put the glue on the piece and not on the main piece, so I can do it either way, I guess. I really wish I had the the candles <laughs> now. Whoops, I got a piece that came loose. I gotta fix that up. Because now that I'm losing the light a little bit, it would look really good with the luminary in there, with those candles in there. But didn't have time to find any. Oh well. Okay. Two more pieces on the outside. Then we're gonna do the base like right underneath here to make it easy to go on to the um, middle part. Thanks, Roxanne. Oh man, I would love a, a, an Amish quilt. I love Amish country. Really enjoyed spending time there. Um, so pretty. We have shakers, but there are no shakers around up here. But um, a lot of shaker villages and things like that up here, but not, not any Amish communities. So you have to go to Pennsylvania or, where is it, Indiana? I think there's a lot in Indiana. Where's our last piece? Mm. Oh gracious, what did I do with it? Did I drop it? Oh, uh, I can't, uh, I don't know. Where did it go? Where did it go? Hmm, okay, we're gonna pretend. Hi Benji. Okay, so let's do the bottom to shore this up and then we'll work on the cupola or the top piece so we've got this piece here and it has these tabs. We want the tabs to face out like this. That's so that it can easily go over the base, okay? So we're going to just put some glue here on our tabs. Let's we'll start with two, I think that would be best to make it line up 
the better. went that's weird I'll find it afterwards I always find it after remember the other day when I did those um cheeseburger cards and I couldn't find the Y it was there I found it after afterwards I'm like darn it I knew because I cut it out twice and I was like I couldn't find the Y that always happens with live video oh well You guys know, this is not about being perfect. It's about accomplishing stuff and feeling good about being creative. I mean, and don't, you know, I hear it all the time in the groups. You know, people are like, it's not perfect, but what do you think? And and um, I always just kind of cringe when I hear that because, um, no, it's not going to be perfect. Of course it's not going to be perfect. But um, it's beautiful nonetheless, so you don't have to um, be putting yourself down. Or, especially when I used to knit sweaters and gave them away, um, you know, I would always point out where I made a mistake or needle point, and then I started thinking, that's bad, because most people just appreciate that you did it. <laughs> But, you know, I had to always point out my mistakes, and I did not like that. So I made a pact with myself to never do that. Um, I mean, with you guys, with crafters, I'll tell you, oh, gee. Um, look, I made a mistake here. So, okay, so then we once we get this piece on, we take these two strips and connect them at the tabs. This also is just to kind of shore it up, okay? To, to make sure that it's nice and thick and fits, connects perfectly onto the base. All right? And then we're going to take it and we're gonna put the glue here on this side, outside edge. And we're gonna, sort of like a brim of a hat that we're gonna put in there so we can give it stability. Okay, and then we just take it and attach it to that those glued tabs. Isn't this easy? It's so easy. Once you see it being done, I think, I, I don't know, for me, I'm a visual person. I can look, um, I can hear, and you know, I don't know. I have to really take it apart um, and see all the little pieces, how it goes together. Okay. Wait for our glue to dry a little bit. And that is the top. Let's show you how it looks. Fits in like that. Let's go up a little bit. So there is most of it done. We still have to do the very tippy top, but there is the front and the bottom, and there's the top like this. Toot, toot. You can put your candles in, take them out, whatever you want to put in there. Fits so nicely in there. Pretend we don't see that I'm missing that piece. <laughs> um, and let's do the cupola. Okay, so um, the cupola is two pieces. It's this piece and this piece. This one's cut out in a brown. And you just fold again at all of these lines. Okay, and the first line you're going to, let me get down a little bit, the first uh, one you're going to do is the tab on the side, okay? So put the tab here, put some glue on that tab, you're going to turn it in this way, and the, he does give you this little hole that you can put, like some sort of finial, whether um, you know, you want to put a little ball there or something like that. 
right? And then you've got your underside. You're gonna just put some, you can either put glue here on these tabs or on the edges here. I usually just put it on these tabs. And fold this like this. Hold it while you, while you glue. If you want, you can do it on the here. Okay, until it's there. Now the second piece, a flag, a flag or a finial of some sort. The second piece actually goes below the cupola. You can also use the vellum here. I cut it out, but I'm not gonna show you that just because it's a little time consuming. Make sure that that's on there. Okay, so this folds, it's smaller and it folds at all of these places all around to give it that shape. Let's see if you can see it. This is how it ends up looking. Okay, a lot of folding <laughs> here on these tiny pieces. You know, actually, there is a, from SVG Cuts, and I want to do it, there's a lighthouse. I'm wondering if you guys want to see the lighthouse now that I'm thinking about it. Um, we can do the lighthouse next week instead of the cards. It's up to you. You guys let me know. Okay, so I folded it all the different places. Hi, Missy. Hi. Um, and we're going to put it, glue, maybe that's a little too much glue. But we're putting it on that little tab and we've got to make it into a ring. So here we go. You admire that I do it live. Why? Because I, I might mess up. <laughs> uh, so, and then here's our yeah, I don't think there are very many people that do these things live. But you know what? I, I take a tip from uh, Julia Child. I don't know if you ever saw her program, but she always recorded hers. She recorded them live, and she never took breaks. And when I was growing up, I watched her religiously, and I just loved that she could just sort of... I remember her when she was on uh, David Letterman, and uh, she was trying to make something. She couldn't get something to work. And so she just was like, well, we'll just do this then. And it was just so hilarious. Um, and I've always admired her style. So um, that's why I, I think I, that's why I like the live stuff. Plus, I like to talk and interact with you guys. And when you recording, it feels weird to record. I've done the recording um, without being live before and it just feels weird so I much rather do live and have some interaction so see here what I did so I put this little piece with the little holes for the cupola where all the pigeons or lovebirds are gonna go nest <laughs> and I've attached it to the bottom of the top very tip top just waiting for the glue to dry. You want to see the lighthouse. Okay, everybody wants to see the lighthouse. Um, it's from Mary at SVG Cuts. I have not attempted it, but it's gorgeous. And there's even a lighthouse keeper's cottage that goes with it. I will post a link so you guys can see ahead of time what we're working with. Um, it's really beautiful. But I've never done it before, so this would be... The first time so now this is a little tricky getting this piece on there because there are no tabs so you have to sort of just kind of do it on the edge I think this is probably the trickiest part so be patient with yourself ah we got a sink a sinker Yeah, the lighthouse, it has, it has a, like a little lighthouse keeper's um, place in it. It's beautiful. Forgot about that one. A lot of summer ones that I, 
I craft a lot in the summertime. I know a lot of people craft probably mainly in the uh, in the winter, but I'm not an outdoorsy kind of a person, like camping and stuff. I mean, I admire people that can do that, but I, it's just not me. Um, I can't believe I lost that one piece. Okay, well, I lost that one piece, so we'll just use our imagination. So there is the top. Oh, hi, Nancy. Nancy's saying lighthouse too. Okay. So here's our top. I'm going to bring you up so you can see. And it nestles right onto the top like that. And that's it, guys. Isn't it awesome? Now, oh, this is not quite on there correctly. And again, there's all kinds of little do dads and do hickeys you can do any way you like you can do the bunting or the ribbons or the stars or a flag or a finial of whatever sort at the top you can have um three lights in there no lights in there one light in there there's all kinds of options for you to make it your own you don't have to do it patriotic you can do it like i did with um this is a traditional color of the gazebos here in New England with green on the bottom and all white and I did started with this glitter so you can do it any way you like and that's a whole lot of fun so that is that before we go on to the pie boxes because I want to show you they're so adorable and they go together really quickly I did the blueberry one and I want to show you the uh the cherry one. They're basically the same thing. So I don't know. He just probably figured blueberry, cherry, whatever. Um, but before we do that, I want to see who's left. Because we started off with, uh, with uh, oh, almost 100 people on, which was great. But um, who's left here? So shout out the um, shout out where you're from and I'm going to pick a couple winners and again as I mentioned we're going to do um, the giveaway for June is the iron on three rolls so if I call your name out what you have to do is you have to send me an email don't send me a PM okay um, because hi Laurie Jo um, great Christine from Michigan so don't send me a PM because um, they get lost and a lot of times if we're not Facebook friends uh, we we uh, we have a little uh, problem finding them and sometimes I find things like weeks later and I'm like ah so I'm old school I do email and I like it and I can trace it better. PMs just not don't work for me. So my email address, if I call it your name, is Miss Rita to the rescue at gmail.com. And you can use that if you ever want to get in touch with me too. You can use that if you want to get in touch with me, okay? Um so here's the pie box. It's just a little uh triangle piece that is the bottom that I just put together just doing the tabs and then the top piece is this red piece also just going to do the tabs and I'll show you how the decorations go on because it's really adorable so let's just do the actual two main pieces of the box while I'm waiting for everybody to check in. Also would like to hear for next month, because I cannot believe it's almost July, what you guys would like to do for a giveaway. I was thinking maybe um, some of the new, maybe a the cosmetic cases or something from the infusible ink with a roll of infusible ink. Or I might be, I try to put together, I try to give away um, like 10 prizes a month. I only have so much money that I can use to give it away. So I try to keep the prizes at about $50. So here's the, um, 
Yeah, the pie box, so cute. Great for a keychain. Oh yeah, for a keychain, good idea. Um, yeah, I want, I want you guys to see those new infusible ink, um, the, the blanks, because we're gonna work on those this coming week. And I'm really excited about them, especially about the, um, the pillowcases. I love pillows, who doesn't love pillows? Okay, so I put together these two pieces right here. And then this is just a bottom piece that goes in here to stabilize. You can glue it in there, okay? And then what you end up with is you end up with these two. This is your pie that's going to go on the side like this. And then you have the three pieces that make up the lattice crust. And you have to fold it all in. There's two pieces of the lattice. And it's like a little tiny tab here. Okay. Just want to make sure I get this right. The first time I did it, I did not get it right. Need to put the long pieces with the long pieces. Is this right? Boop. Is I doing this right? Maybe not. Nope, not right. Not right, Rita. That's right. Okay. So let's start with our cherry, the red on the top. And this is how the lattice goes on like this and this. See how it crisscrosses? You just crisscross it like that. Isn't that adorable? Oh my God. I love it. It's so cute. And then, um, and then the pieces go on the side like this. And this is the back piece with the crust. So let's go ahead and, and put the glue on there. Just so cute. It's a little favor box. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe they intended for you to put... I don't know. I don't think so. I can't imagine. Um, they intended you to put actual pie in there. What a messy thing that would be. <laughs> but... So cute. Like this. Let's flip this over. I might be putting these on a little bit wrong because the way that it's cut, I suppose I should have put them on the other way, but if you don't tell, I won't tell. All right, like this. Okay, let's put some glue here on this part. So you're all, telling me you're still here with me because I'm going to be picking the winners. Let's do uh, let's do two winners tonight. Maybe three. Depends on what I who I see. I'm going to pick people I haven't given a prize to before. But I think now that we've been doing these prizes for a while, we're going to have to have some overlap soon. So if you've won before um, you can still be eligible to win. And just so you know, we do these prizes every month. I do switch it up. So if you want to win a prize, you have to be paying attention because we, um, I, sometimes I do it in the live chats and sometimes I do it in the groups or I've done it on YouTube. Didn't work out too well with YouTube because, they have an antiquated messaging system, if, if you ask me, but mm, that's just me. Um, not as, as advanced as Facebook. So, so we're just doing the lattice. So that's how you win. And I, um, they, the prizes are awarded from Cricut. So it does take 
a couple of weeks after you win to receive it and particularly now because they're still having some shipping delays although they have cut up quite a bit but I'm still waiting for a couple of orders from them so um you have to be patient if you won and but don't be so patient that if you don't get it after a month call you know text me or something and say I didn't get my prize yet I have one person Sydney that hadn't get her prize yet and I'm still tracking that down but for the most part they come from uh, Cricut and they have two distribution centers one in Kentucky and one in California it depends on where you live on where they ship it out to all right I'm losing I know. You know what, Paula, people that you emailed, I emailed them too, and it took two weeks for them to get back to me. That's so unlike them. I think they just got so overwhelmed. Everybody was just, you know, crafting. <laughs> and they just didn't expect that kind of response. And I noticed that they, like, they haven't done a, a mystery box recently um, because... I think that that kind of got them in trouble. They had a ton of mystery boxes in March, and that's when COVID hit. And so they um, they ended up getting overwhelmed and, you know. And remember, they're still a pretty growing company. Um, they're still learning how to scale. So we have to give them a little bit of, uh, a little bit of leeway there. I know I'm losing the light and I apologize. Definitely next time, gonna do the light better. You know, we do the best we can with what we got. And then when we know better, we do better. That's, I think Maya Angelou said that, so. Um, okay, so the, the, the cream part is just these little pieces that I cut out in glitter, in white glitter, because you know, I love glitter. And they're just little points some glue there okay and need a little bit more glue here cut out extra cream <laughs> I like extra cream so This glitter and um, some of this cardstock is from Cricut. Um, they don't have as much of a color selection on their regular cardstock, but they do have excellent glitter cardstock. And um, I think you get, I think somebody told me you get 10 sheets, full sheets, 12 by 12 sheets of glitter cardstock. And they have gold and blue and red and uh, are like a bronze, silver, white. I love their white cardstock, um, glitter cardstock. So there it is. Isn't that cute? Isn't it cute? Oh, so cute. Okay. So let me move you down here um, and see. Yeah, it's been it's been tough for everybody. It's been tough, but we've done really well as a as a community. I think um, we've done really well. Debbie Lean, hello, Susan Sharp. Let's see, I'm gonna go down. I am gonna pick, the first one I'm gonna pick is Lola because I've been meaning to pick you. Really, Lola, you won? You did? Oh, well, okay, all right. Well, let me pick another person. I thought that I didn't pick you. <gasps> you could put it together as a whole pie. What a great idea. I wonder you need, what, eight slices? All right, let's see who I got. Um, okay, so I'm reading your comments here. Let's see. Do Dorothy, Emmy. Roxanne, you won, right? How about Jane Rogers Saul's giver from Windbur, Pennsylvania? That would be the first one. Jane. And let me just keep going. Laverne Hooks from Columbia, South Carolina. And let's do Tara 
Rislo from Risto, I'm sorry, from Idaho. Okay, so we got Tara from Idaho, um, Laverne from South Carolina, and um, since Lola, you said you won recently, I don't remember that. Jean Saul's giver from Windberg, Pennsylvania. Here's what you have to do, ladies. Um, you have to send me an email at Miss Rita to the Rescue with your name, your full name, because sometimes people have different names on Facebook. So give me your full name that you're used to getting mail to and your address, including your zip code. And I will put in the prize for you to get those three rolls of um, of iron-on to play with. And that is Cricut Date Night. I am definitely going to have to work with the light for next time, but we had a great time. I hope you had a good time. Let me know if you had a good time, and I will repost these. If, um, if you didn't catch it all, I'll be reposting them later on or tomorrow morning, depending, um, all over the place, including on YouTube. If you're not following me on YouTube, I have over 300 of these videos on YouTube on uh, everything you can imagine that has to do with cricket and we are just going down all the different details and knocking them all out so you can understand how this works but I just think this is just a fun project and it's a wonderful way to spend a Saturday night and I thank you all thank you all for joining me tonight I'm so thankful um, to have friends that I can spend a Saturday night with and doing something I love doing. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And we'll see you again on Monday with another week, jam-packed week, full of all kinds of fun cricket crafts that we're going to, we're just going to have a blast next week. So make sure you tune in or catch me on the replay. Okay, everyone? Thanks so much. Have a wonderful night and a, and a great tomorrow. See you Monday morning.